Hi witchlings, welcome back to my channel, it is me, your local chaotic witch on. And today's video is about what to do when you feel stuck in your practice. This particular video was requested, um, someone asked for it, I think, either on my poll on the community tab or in a little like my Patreon, Discord, I'm not sure where it was asked for, but it was asked for. So we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about, you know, what to do in that situation. And let me just say, I, know, I do not know a singular witch or practitioner that has not felt incredibly stuck in their practice at some point. It is not a, just a you thing. Um, it is not something that you are alone in. We all go through these kind of phases of stagnancy and growth and change. And I wanna prompt this video by saying that I don't think that a little bit of stuckness is bad. I think stuckness as a word implies that it is like situational, like you are stuck as a situation. But I think that the term that I would probably use is like a resting period. Sometimes us feeling stuck is a chance for us to regroup and reflect and reconnect with ourselves and the earth and our practice without having to push ourselves super, super hard into these changes and these growing periods. I have gone through so many different quote unquote tower moments. Um, and after every single tower moment, I go through the hermit. I go through these kind of slowing down phases, the moon, the sun, reconnecting with joy, reconnecting with myself. But I do want to talk a bit about if you feel like you're really stuck and you would want to be unstuck, these are some things that I do um, to help and some things that I kind of try to work through in that period of stuckness. And I don't really know any signs for feeling stuck. I think it's genuinely just like you feel stagnant or you feel unmoving. There was an old saying that one of my exes used to tell me about uh, that was like an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. And sometimes you feel like the immovable object. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter what unstoppable force is there meeting the immovable object, that object is still immovable. I'm pretty sure that's a physics saying. I don't know. So starting off, my big question is what I always try to kind of, kind of figure out is what areas do I feel stuck in? Do I feel stuck in my career? I feel like things aren't really growing there. Do I feel stuck in my content? I feel like things aren't really growing there. And kind of, I try to break it down into areas, into sections that I can kind of tackle more practically and metaphysically. Um, so oftentimes when I'm looking at these areas that I'm feeling stuck in, I look for a feeling that, feeling of dissatisfaction. And I kind of base my feeling of stuckness on that feeling of dissatisfaction. Am I feeling satisfied with the content I'm creating? Am I feeling satisfied with what I'm putting out into the universe? Am I feeling satisfied in where my career is or my job is or my website is right now? And if I answer no to those questions, I typically kind of look at and say, okay, well, is this something that is hindering me? Is this something that I can focus on? Is there an obstacle here to tackle? Or is there something to move, that I can just kind of let go of. Um, and this thing too is <laughs> oftentimes I feel like when I'm feeling stuck, when I talk to people who are feeling stuck, there's very often something that hasn't been let go of yet, like the Eight of Cups. There's something you are holding on to that is no longer serving you and you cannot move forward until you leave it behind. I talk about the Eight of Cups because Sally, please insert a picture of the Eight of Cups. Uh, I talk about the Eight of Cups because it has these kind of cups all stacked together. It's clearly something that you have been working on for a long time and then you kind of move on. I had a recent situation where I was kind of feeling stuck. I was feeling stuck in a particular emotion I was having. I was feeling stuck in a particular relationship and I kind of looked at it and I said, I said, I kind of, I looked at it like the eight of cups. I said, do I really want to stay here? Even if I've spent time on this thing, on this relationship, do I want to stay here if it's holding me back? The answer was no, so I let go. I let it go. I let that relationship go. And I said, if, I said the thing that I love to say, which is, oh sweet Jesus, the grasshopper again. Praying mantis, sorry. 
If y'all have been staying tuned, um, in my video why, of why I'm no longer, longer a pagan, there was a whole situation with the grasshopper outside my window, and I just, praying mantis, sorry, I just want to let everyone know that the praying mantis just fell again. I genuinely don't know what to do to help this insect, because I like put a stick down there so she could climb up. Looks like right now she is cutting the spider web that is holding her. God, this really is Animal Kingdom. What are you doing? Oh my God. She is chewing the spider web to get out of it. Also, I haven't seen Mama Spider for ages, so I'm not super concerned about this praying mantis dying. Oh my God, I got so distracted. Am I about to pause this? Oh, let ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, oh, ma'am. Oh my God, she's upside down, grabbing at the wall. Ma'am, ma'am. She's doing it, she's clearing the spider webs. She's, that's so cool. All right, I'm gonna help her once I'm done with this video because I am, I need her to survive. But yeah, looking at things that maybe is there something that you could let go of that's holding you back? Is there something that no longer serves you that's holding you back? Um, this stuckness also sometimes, to me at least, feels like it originates from having the same patterns, doing the same things over and over again. And so when I feel like I've been stuck in kind of the same place, in the same position, doing the same smell, the same things all over again, I try to make it a habit to push myself outside of that. I say, okay, I'm gonna talk to my friend who's also an Italian folk practitioner and see what um, they recommend. <gasps> Come on, baby. Oh my God, sweet Jesus, you can make it. Oh my God, I need to help her now. I'll be right back. I got her out. <laughs> Only show her in a picture real quick because I know there's gonna be other people invested in like the insect There she is on a little pine branch. She blends right in. I got her with a rake Although I'll miss having a praying mantis outside my window I am really happy that she didn't die in that little like basement well window. So I call this a successful day. Okay um, Moving on I also find that with stuckness, like I said, repeating the same cycles, I seek out something new. Let's say I've never done this well before, but I've always wanted to, this is the time I will do it. I love to spend time allowing myself to rest. Um, what that typically looks like is, you know, spending time with my plants, taking care of my plants, reading, um, doing all of these things that make me happy and make me feel nourished. So that's the question of so like, what makes you feel happy and nourished? Because for me, it's spending time out in nature. It's reading books, it's tending to my plants, it's being with people I love. And those things help me rest because, you know, and I, I think like in terms of practice stagnancy, resting is really just not putting pressure on yourself to get everything done and not putting pressure on yourself to make your practice look like someone else's. I often found that I felt the most stuck when I was looking at someone else's practice or content or anything and said, I'm not doing that. I'm not hitting those marks. I'm not getting that amount of views. And with that brought this level of not feeling good about myself, <laughs> not feeling great. And because of that, you know, I try to, I actively work to avoid that now. I actively work to avoid comparing myself to others and feeling like I'm not good enough. Because those stuckness, that feelings, that stagnancy comes from me not feeling confident in what I'm creating, in my practice and what I'm doing in life. Um, and that may not be the same for everyone, but this is, you know, what I experience, especially in stagnancy. And I think that reconnecting with yourself uh, through journaling, through tarot readings, through all of these different kind of methods, some will use shadow work, some go to therapy, is a great way to really work through stagnancy. Whenever I'm, you know, I talked about shadow work that I do because I, you know, I also did therapy in tangent to shadow work. Um, shadow work in itself is a psychological concept. 
Um, it is not necessarily, you know, just any type of self-reflection. Shadow work is very specific to Carl Jung and his framework for attacking, you know, therapeutic, attacking like his psychological framework. But sometimes do shadow work and I like to do reactionary based shadow work. And what that looks like is I have an emotion, I have a feeling, I have something happening internally and I kind of slow down and stop and I try to objectively poke at it. Um, so let's say I feel rejected by something. I'm going to stop and slow down and say, okay, why do I feel rejected? Is this a rejection? Is this a perceived rejection? Is this, you know, bringing up trauma or past experiences that I haven't come to terms with? And through that, I kind of break down and through my different feelings about these situations about what I'm feeling. So that can be a method of reconnecting with yourself, reconnecting with your emotions, spending time journaling, thinking through things. I also know of a particular tarot spread, which I can't, I have to get, that I love and used to use all the time to get me out of stuck things. It is not a spread that I came up with myself. It's one that I found online that I continue to use for ages. Oh my God, I missed so many tarot spreads. Now I just pull cards and I'm like, what's happening? What are we doing today? Damn, so many relationship readings. Y'all would be interested in me offering like relationship tarot readings or future relationship tarot readings. Just let me know. I don't know if that's like my vibe, but I feel like some people would be very into that. I'd be very into that. I know it's in here because this is my old, old book of shadows. Bottled up spread. Ooh, here we go. This is nice. I'm looking for a different one, but this is also a good one for stagnancy. Oh my God, I found it. So I'm gonna give you guys, and I just lost the other one. To open the door uh, regarding unconscious aspects of a particular issue, it is a general reading. I got this from the Osho Zen book, which I originally, I had the Osho Zen tarot ages ago and I loved it, but then I found some weird information about Osho Zen and I wasn't sure if he was a cult leader or not. So I just left it, I left it alone. But this is from that book, apparently. The key is eight cards, the first one, is what is repressed. The second one is the passive card or the passive aspect of the situation. The third card is the active aspect. The fourth card is the focus card and what you need to consider. The fifth card is your insight into body. The sixth card is your insight into heart. And the seventh card is your insight into being. We can just say mind for that one. And then the eighth one is the outcome card. The other one that I will give you, and I'm gonna go through each one, bottle left spread. This one is six cards. Starts off at the top with the cork card. Then we move into the negatives card, um, which is the second card. The third card, which is positives. How to move past work on negatives, the issue, and then how the positives will change you. This is a really weird spread. I feel like this doesn't tell you anything. Maybe it does. I like both of these spreads because I think they both look at, are more focused on self-reflection than they are on what you need to do right now. Um, if you want, I love a good like three card obstacle, what I need to do outcome tarot spread. I'm always a fan of that. But I, I definitely thought of these while creating and working on this video. Oh, it's tea time. Time for a tea bite. Look at that, it looks like golden. That's like really good. Holy cow. This is the Justice Now tea. I got it from Ritual Craft. It is delicious. And I believe 100% of the proceeds from the tea, all the tea they sell goes to Black Lives Matter, um, which is amazing. And also delicious. So we went over tarot spreads to help you if you're stuck in your practice. I also had some ideas for spells or things you can do to help unstick you. Um, 
to help move you out of that stagnancy, apart from resting, reflecting, doing tarot spreads, kind of reconnecting with emotions. I have a few things. The first thing that I love to do when I'm feeling stuck is I create an intentional outfit. This doesn't necessarily have to be glamour. This could be a veil matched with particular earrings. This could be just an outfit that you feel good in. For me, reconnecting with myself and reconnecting to my practice and allowing to, removing myself from that stagnancy oftentimes is a lot of like, do I feel confident right now? What do I need to do to feel confident? Um, along with this, you can wear jewelry you love or that you have charmed. For me, that is my Menofiga earrings, my Corneau. Um, I also, as part of creating intentional outfits, creating, you know, wearing things I love, I oftentimes wear veils or jeans that I really love. I have an Instagram post that talking more in depth about glamour that should be out soon if it's not out already. I also have a whole video talking about glamour magic. Do, do, on one of these sides. It'll be here. I also love spending time really make like spending time making tea, spending time drinking tea and chanting tea and just kind of really focusing on the process of something that is going to enter my body. That could be food as well. Um, I use honey to sweeten it. For this one, I used the Justice Now tea, which is the one I'm drinking from Ritual Craft. It has a few herbal allies in it, like lemongrass, rosemary, lavender that I connect with. It may be lemon verbena instead of lemongrass or lemon balm, but it's delicious. I love adding honey to my tea and I am a slut for raw honey. The other thing I do is I spend some time cleaning up my space. I really basically live in my room. You know, I'll go to work other places sometimes, but if my space isn't clean, if things are cluttered, if there's dirty clothes on the floor, anything like that, I, I don't feel good about myself. I don't feel good about my space or my practice. So I spend time picking up clothes, putting things away cleaning up my altar space, whatever I need to do to feel more in tune with that. I'm more in tune with uh, how, where I'm at, you know? I love grounding as well. Tea making for me is considered grounding, but also taking care of my plants. Um, spending time checking on them, reading, kind of getting out of my head of what I feel like everybody wants from me or what I feel like my practice should be and getting into what I enjoy, what I love, what makes me feel good and nourished um, really allows me to move past that stagnancy. Oftentimes if I'm feeling stagnant or stuck, especially in content creation, I log off. <laughs> I get off my phone for the whole day. Um, I completely disconnect and I spend time reading. I spend time outside. I spend time reconnecting with what I love and spending time doing things that I love, which oftentimes happens to be YouTube content. And from there, I find myself reconnecting to my creativity, reconnecting to the kind of content that I want to create, to the things that interest me and that, that I love. And these are all things that you know are gonna be different for every practitioner. Every practitioner, every witch has a different way of unsticking, a different way of moving past stagnancy. I also think that sometimes, um, like the seasons, our practices go through those changes, through those seasonal changes. And utilizing the seasons and those periods of stagnancy, growth, movement versus no change, allow us to kind of work through all the different tides of life. 
If you're feeling like stagnant and you're feeling stuck, write down a list of your goals. Write down a list of manifestations or goals or things that you want to complete and continue working it into that period where growth is going to happen. Because if you're feeling stuck and stagnant, the only way up, the only way is up. The only way is up. I think that's correct. I love to, sometimes I'll do reversals if I feel like that stagnancy is caused by an external force. Sometimes, like I said, I'll just spend time resting and reconnecting. You can start a money bowl when you're feeling like you need more. Like, and I'm, I'm the kind of person that does spells based on necessity. Feeling stuck in your practice oftentimes necessitates to a lot of people that feeling of needing to do something. So the question is, what do you need to do? What spell would help you move past this period of stagnancy? And what tarot reading or piece of knowledge or thing can you do to help yourself move past it? I've given you kind of all of my ideas and talked a lot about all the different things that I do when I'm feeling stuck, but I'm really interested in hearing from you. What do you do when you're feeling stuck in your practice? What do you do to kind of ride the stagnancy into the time of change and growth? Let me know in the comments. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for watching. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, turn the bell on if you want, but absolutely no pressure. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Remember to drink water. Saba and Vika.